Welcome back, viewers. It's James Comey, half assed reporter, the guy on the bike. A special shout out to our friends in South Africa, New Orleans, and Kansas City. We're going to try to pop in here at Betty Cunningham Gallery and take a look at a very interesting painting show by John Lees. Well, I, uh, I've been trying to get in to see this show for about uh, three weeks. And uh, every time I think I can carve out some space, Amy Hill, hello. I uh, end up getting hung up in some other things. But we carved out a block of time today and decided we'd come in and see the show. a little bit with Peter Atchison. He's a big fan of uh, painterly painting. Hey, this piece is titled Pond, 1991 to 1993, 2011 to 2012, oil on canvas, 30 and a quarter by 78. And I believe that I started seeing uh, John's work maybe in the early 80s. And if I'm not mistaken, I think maybe the one of the first shows of his that I saw was all, or a lot of it was based on paintings of ponds. So this is oil on canvas. Okay, it's late, so we're gonna have to hurry our way through here. A couple of nice little paintings. It's titled Couple Winter and Couple in Landscape. These are oil on paper mounted on canvas. Say 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, even this one looks like it's a little worn down, looks abraded, worked on. Couple winter 2020 oil on paper mounted on canvas. They're saying this is nine by eight inches, but I would say it's more like uh, 20 by 16. Well, I was uh, reading my Facebook feed and uh, a friend, uh, he's a wonderful painter, I think he's British, Simon Link, uh, posted a picture of this painting, which is bathtub. This is 1972 to 2010. So we're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of about 35 years. Uh, Anyway, uh, Simon was kind of pondering the idea of what it meant if you worked on a painting for that long. And I think it was Ashley Bickerton commented that, uh, how could you ever uh, part with something if it had been such an integral part of your creative practice? I think in a certain way, the uh, one of the wonderful things about the way John works is that uh, these all seem to go kind of beyond the the cursory get the thing down, and they 
they get into this realm of the painterly fetish, maybe. It's not a blue courtyard, 1986 to 2020. Gosh, she's only been working on this one for 30 some odd years. Also, uh, hey, look at the way that he's uh, gridded out his canvas. Okay, we're gonna uh, hurry through here because it's getting close to closing. Romana Monte Castello, 1997 to 2007. This is 27 by eight. Actually, I kind of like the uh, narrow vertical format. Uh, gosh, parts of this almost have the, uh, the character of a architectural Wayne Scott. I think that's the name of that. Oh. Architectural flourish there. So I think that uh, John does a great job of uh, getting the forms to read with a very limited kind of earthy palette. Okay, this is titled Sitting in One Place Scroll. And uh, okay, so we've got little notations of the dates of working on the piece. There's the little kitty. Twelve thirty-one twenty. Okay, we don't know how long he worked on this, but probably years. Seen notes for 02, 16, 17. I would say it looks mostly like uh, graphite. It's got a mixed medium on paper. There's a whole narrative in here. There's the house in the country. There's uh, figures with the dogs on leashes. This evolved. It could have started out as individual pieces. They could have been in a sketchbook and he pasted them together into this scroll. So they're saying he started this in 2001. Hills of Home, smaller version. This is 2019. And uh, what I like is a little light magenta fence. And we've got our figure with his dogs. I guess that this uh, kind of refers to the, the scroll. This is 11 by 24 inches. One more here. Landscape Umbria, 2020, oil on panel. And, uh, well, this is nice. It's got some uh, glazes in there. And this is maybe one of the more uh, Sumptuous coloristic pieces. Two panels. Okay, let's go downstairs.
slope, 2001 to 2021, oil and canvas over with 21 by 34. Well, I was talking about his buildup of the, the impasto. And uh, it's another aspect to it that you can sort of see here is his uh, scraping. And uh, gouging. Rhythm King, 1984 to 2020. Well, yeah, and you can see where he's actually scratched back in there at the end of the painting so much that he's gone down to the. Uh, it's like some kind of raw fabric. As I said, I was talking to uh, Peter Atchison, another confirmed paint head. And uh, titled Monk Stream, Stream Bed 2002 to 2020. And uh, Peter was talking about the way that uh, some of these works made him think of Albert Pinkham Ryder. And uh, I think Ryder is one of the maybe most legendary, iconic American painters of the uh, late 19th, early 20th century. He kind of uh, would be Something that would be the equivalent of an American, oh, maybe a, a Matisse or a, somebody that is that influential. I know that uh, Pollock was uh, fascinated with his work. It's titled Karya Did in the Snow, 2018. And, uh, well, I was talking about John Lee's impasto buildup, and uh, I kind of uh, nicknamed this kind of buildup popcorn impasto. And, uh, well, over the years I've seen a few people that use it, but. Uh, it has another character when you're doing works that you work, work on for 20, 25, 30 years to get the surface like that and the accumulation. It's titled Profile Sandy, 2013 to 2019, 12x9. Also, I think that uh, we've got at least one other show in the files of John that you could go back and look. And I think that uh, yeah. some of these figurative pieces are kind of uh, interesting and uh, I haven't seen a lot of them before. This is titled Slope 2. You know, I think there was another fantastic painter that uh, Betty showed called uh, Jake Barto, who was another person that was kind of influenced by, uh, well, not only writer, but I guess what you would call the uh, Hudson River Romantic painters. This is Hills of Home. 1997 to 2021 oil on canvas. This is 22 by 49. Well, I was I was talking about the, uh, the Hudson River romantics. Uh, I think George Innes would also be someone that's in that kind of a category. Oh, gosh, this one is also. Uh, pretty juicy as far as the colors. And uh, yeah, this uh, 
paint surface has a whole different uh, character when you start to get under layers of bright colors and glazes and uh, you know, thin translucent over things in various colors. And uh, oh yeah, his little fences are nice. There's our dog again. Okay, so this is one of the pieces that I've also seen reproduced online that I thought was uh, kind of extraordinary. It's titled Sandy, 1987 to 2020. Okay, even Betty is cutting out, so I'm taking the hint that it's getting close to closing time. Oil on masonite and wood. Okay, so... Uh, this is another one of the paintings where he's kind of scraped things down, maybe sanded them down. And I would say you know, a couple of weeks ago we went in and uh, looked at a show that was featuring John Graham. I think there was also Arshul Gorky and Willem de Kooning in the show, but uh, one of the wonderful things about John Graham was his late series of woman paintings. and. Uh, he would work on those for years, correct them, fix things here and there, and uh, change them. And he really got to have the character of a uh, an icon, which I think this one does as well. Anyway, we're going to wrap up with one last piece here. House in Denville. 1976 to 2020, oil on canvas. 17 by 21. Okay, so this also is kind of a straight ahead landscape. I often talk about enjoying examining the edges of paintings because you get a kind of a forensic view of uh, their fabrication. Oh gosh, this looks like uh, the face is actually glued on to another canvas. That's interesting. Well, so that was John Lee here at Betty Cunningham. Stone Gallery. Take a look at an installation. I was out scooting around and I already popped into probably three or four galleries here on the Lower East Side and uh, I was not overwhelmed. And then I popped in here and said, uh, gosh, this looks interesting. This is an exhibition titled Arena by Katie Bell. And this is basically a, an installation. And I guess they are considering this wall piece as one unit. And then we'll take a look in the backyard, which is another piece. Well, I was admiring the work and uh, I think there's a kind of a, an architectural 
part to this as far as uh, some of the forms, although it's not, uh, I guess what you would call neoclassical architecture, but it references all that in a more of a uh, postmodern sense. I think the other thing that kind of intrigued me is the, uh, the use of a lot of uh, basic geometric forms. So we've got some of these spheres, some ovals, triangles, planks. Also, there's a lot of art historical references here. And I think the other thing that's kind of uh, intriguing is the use of synthetic materials, but synthetic materials that have been designed to uh, kind of imitate something real, like a piece of granite or something. And I was kind of... Uh, curious about these molded pieces and uh, talked to the, the gallerist and he told me that these are parts of uh, molded jacuzzi bathtubs. It says that Katie Bell also uh, scavenges or finds some of these forms around in Brooklyn. And, uh, well, that's always interesting. Lots of strange things being made and thrown away out there. Also, uh, I was mentioning the fact that a lot of this is, oops, a lot of this is uh, imitation surfaces, but it does have a kind of a nice, uh, Palette, very uh, low-keyed modulated palette. It says in the press release that uh, Katie was influenced by Robert Morris and some of his stack pieces. Okay, so this is very typical of the, the column pieces, and I would say that this is probably about. Uh, uh, seven feet tall, 18 by 12 maybe, something like that. And uh, well, they talk about the, the focus that uh, Katie has on the sharp edges, the pristine surfaces. And you can see where uh, she's really taken a lot of time to uh, bring these surfaces all the way over to the edge. This is a nice little kind of a coloristic game with our nooks that are a little darker blue playing off with the shadows. So she's got a lot of these little uh, spheres floating around here, almost like a little Easter egg hunt. So there are some interesting little details on some of them. We've got some scroll work that's been uh, mitered, routered into the column. And some of them have the slots inside. Some more of our spheres. Let's go out in the garden. They're calling this tableau. And uh, the sound effects of the feet grinding in the gravel, I think, is an extra part. Uh, so this is not synthetic. This is actually a little slab of marble here, a little column. And 
I was thinking that a lot of this beyond the the references that she's talking about in the press release there's a basic kind of uh, question of nature and culture or uh, nature versus technology and how one of the things that mankind is always trying to do is control nature and force it into a some kind of instrumentalized form so that it can be used and exploited for a man's profit, benefit, whatever. Uh, this piece especially made me think of Michael Graves and the whole postmodern architectural thing. Got some more blocks. I'm still in Marvel. Arena by Katie Bell. There it's Spence Brownstone. Okay, I think this is my favorite piece right here. I like that blue. You can like this, share, post it all your social media sites, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. We just ask you to say. Thank you, Kate. Whoa! Dark Sky Hustlers! Yeah, thank you.